grace and peace and rest and love on the presence of our bridegroom and our king and our righteous judge and men of war. And by grace, by a willingness and obedience, the king of kings in these end times and last days is gathering his brides gathering his sons gathering his friends and presenting them to the Father. And that is why we are gathered. Look, listen and learn for revelations is for your intimacy. Secrets is for your relationship. Treasures is for your fellowship. But mysteries is for your communion with him. Before we even open the line, preparation through reverence, through worship, through praise is key. My grace, before I share with you the letter on Jesus' heart, we are in the eighth day. And eight means new beginning. Write what you see and hear tonight. Because you will need to build on the rock. In the days to come. The depths. The heights. The widths. And the lengths. of his love. Please take a look at those four. We come to the feet of Jesus. Heights. Look at those four. It's very, very important. I want you to look at Jesus. Where his head was. Heights. Face. His feet. Where the nails were. Depths. His two hands where the nails were, width and length. Take note of that. And then where he was pierced on the side. Great. I want you to look at the bridal price on the cross because he is the way. To the Father. Look, listen, and learn because you were bought with a price. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Write what you see and hear is very important. Intimacy, relationship, fellowship, communion, four. Revelations, mysteries, secrets, treasures, four. 
heights, mm -hmm. depths, mm -hmm. widths, mm -hmm. lengths, for humility, meekness, obedience, trust. Covenant, inheritance, reward, promise, for. Asking, seeking, knocking, striving. Take note of that. Trials, test, temptations, tribulations, or take note of that. I allow test mm, to bring you higher. In me. You see the height? When he's taking you higher in him, test is the way. I use trials to take you deep depths. Mm, take note. If you are on the line and you want to be a wise master builder, meaning Jesus will give you a rock to build intimacy with him, to build relationship with him. You need treasures for where your heart is. Take note of that. It's where your treasure, it's where your revelation, it's where your secret, it's where your mystery is. Your heart. This is why you must cultivate a deep relationship with me. Worship drives the enemy away. I like this one. Hmm. The most intimate place in my heart. Who wants that place? Mm -hmm. Take notes. Take notes again. Look at the cross. Please look at his feet. That's your walk with him. Take note of that. To walk with him, you need nails on your feet. Because a nail, bah, 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 when it hits the ground, is rooted, is grounded, it cannot be removed. The wounds on your feet are signs of your love for him. Look at his two hands, the left and right hand. There are nails in there. Never take for granted the price of fellowship, the price of intimacy, the price of relationship, the price of communion. Done by Jesus Christ on the cross. You cannot build one without looking at the cross to build. Three liquids came from three parts of his being. Mm -hmm. blood from his heart water from his soul sweat from his body we are all here for one purpose and one purpose only 
all things was made for him. You were made for him. Take note of that. You were not made for anyone else. Colossians verse 1 talks about all things was made for him, by him, in him, through him. For again. In him. Mm -hmm. Intimacy. For him. Relationship. Mm -hmm. By him. Everything the Father and Jesus before the foundation of the world, it was all about relationship. They created heaven and earth for relationship. They created man and woman for relationship. See? I love what Jesus said. You have to hear this. And if you want this place, then you must seek his face for this place. The crown of thorns on his head was for face to face. Adam lost his crown. That crown was face to face. And so the second man, the last man, Jesus Christ had to have a crown of thorns on his head as the price for the crown of face to face. Take note of these four. Wounds, scars, bruises, stripes. There go four again. Which one is for relationship? Was it his wounds? I'm going to tell you. He said, Jesus was talking to me today about you must teach my heart about the price, the bridal price of our marriage. If you want to marry Jesus, there are four levels to the marriage. There's depths of the marriage. You see why, everyone line, you see why you can never say, oh, I'm Jesus' friend. There's more. Just in the friendship, oh, there's heights of the friendship. There's depths of the friendship. Why don't you look at it? There's lengths of the friendship. And there's widths. Just the friendship has four layers. Heights, depths, width, length. That's just friendship. Now look at the marriage. Depths. So watch this. You could be high in friendship, but you're not deep in marriage. How many of us want weights, balance, and scale? Meaning you want the fullness of each level of relationship. So watch this. You might be working on your bride with him, but you're not working on your friendship with him. Hmm. When I was in the bedroom chambers today, only by grace and mercy, this is what our bridegroom and our king was saying from his heart. I said, wow, how do you have balance in all three? And this is what he was saying. He said, you can be higher with me higher in marriage but you're not deeper in sonship see so let me say it again heights depths with length or friendship heights length with length of sonship heights length with length of bride there are weights scales and balance of the marriage of the friendship and of the sonship the most intimate place in my heart now you know when Jesus and the father is telling you about the most intimate place who wants it The most intimate place. He didn't say in my mind. He said my heart. Only those after his heart. Only. Will win that place. But I must tell you. About his wounds. 
which one paid for which. Don't you want to hear it? Because we think the relationship is free. No, it's not. Salvation is free. No one can pay that. But if he tells you, deny yourself and pick up your cross mm -hmm, and follow me, why are you following him too? That's what I want to tell you. When Jesus says, follow me, it's different than walk with me. You can be following him, but you're not walking. Mm -hmm. You can be walking with him, but you're not being intimate. Everybody, you see it? I'm going to break it down. Jesus had 82 disciples. The father only chose 12. There is a difference between a disciple and a friend. 82. But in the 82, he had 12 that were his friends. You see the difference? The other disciples, the 60, they left Jesus because they were offended. Offense is the number one killer. I'm going to break it down. Of following him. If you, so what's, what's this? If any man come after me, it's open for all. If it's conditions. Let him deny himself. Pick up his cross. Look at those two. And follow me. Why are we following him too? The father. Because the father is preparing a bride for Jesus. But Jesus is preparing sons for the father. You see, they are both. As I said, my father is working. I am working. I need to let you know first his heart. Always remember these four. The father's heart. The father's time. The father's season. The father's business. We don't want to talk about business first. That's his hand. He says, seek my face. That's his heart. In his heart are his ways. But in his business are his acts. Many know his acts. That's his hand. They see power. They see glory. They see miracle. They, be signs, they see signs and wonders. But Jesus said, you don't believe because of miracles, signs, and wonders. Do we have continually on this Zoom those who are saying, my pursuit is only after your heart. Beyond being used, I want to be approved. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, I will tell them. Mm -hmm. He said, tell them this for Appointed, approved, set, seal. The songwriter says, set me as a seal upon your heart. That's heart to heart. What is a seal? Seal is intimacy. How many of you want to be approved? So we're going to break down each one. Ready? Steady to show yourself approved. If you're not studying, what am I supposed to study? You're not studying the Bible to get head knowledge, to argue with people and win cases. He said, come and learn of me. I am. You know the first thing people do when they come to Jesus? They don't learn his heart. They learn the ways of the church. Legalism, religion, tradition. Man-made tradition. I must talk to you tonight about these six things that Jesus said he's doing, even in a relationship. Watch this. It's very, very deep. I didn't know. He said, do you know even in our relationship, fellowship, relationship, so relationship, fellowship, communion, and intimacy, I uproot, I tear down, I pull down, I uproot. See, there go four again. Tear down. What's he tearing down? That's heights. You see, for each one, you know, sometimes it's hard to be on Zoom. I wish we were face to face. Because some learn by sight, some learn by hearing. It's good to sometimes draw, this is right, write the vision. 
tear down, pull down, uproot, destroy. See those four? Now, don't miss this. It goes with relationship, fellowship, intimacy, communion. Now, so here's the answer. What must he uproot mm -hmm, so that your relationship don't fall? He says, whatever my father has not planted, take note of that, I must, there you go, so there you go, must be uprooted. So let's break it down. How many of you want this intimacy? This relationship, this fellowship and communion. This is it. The bridegroom is also a gardener. And for him to dress and keep you in the garden, he tends to the garden of your heart. And how many of you know, even in the natural, your heart has four chambers, four arteries. Left artery, right artery. Your heart in the natural has four chambers. See, they go four again. The most intimate place in my heart is reserved for the purest of souls. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. So let's go again. Always remember, these three go together. High, higher, highest. Mm -hmm. To go high, higher, highest, I need to tell you the stone you need. Or you're going to fall. Because some of those who have reached the greatest heights are in danger of the greatest fall. Lucifer is our example. He said, to go high, higher and highest in my face, the foundation of heights. That's what you should write tonight. Yes, it's being recorded, but you should write. The foundation, and that's how you need to build don't build your life on gifts and anointings and miracles and signs and wonders. When test, trial, temptation, and tribulation come, you're going to fall. Because you don't have a solid foundation. You don't have seven pillars of intimacy. Who want to learn tonight? If the Lord permits me to teach you on the seven pillars of intimacy. That's why there were seven lampstands around Jesus. Those were not just the churches. John got the revelation about the seven lambs, lampstands being the churches, but there are six other revelations about the lampstands around him. See, he was in the midst of seven lampstands and there were seven stars in his hand. The stars are not just angels. To John, it was revealed to him as angels, but there's more revelations about stars in his hand. There are seven pillars of intimacy. There are seven pillars of relationship. There are seven pillars. That's why there's seven eyes. Seven horns. Seven means complete. Now, do you see everybody? It's very deep. Or oh, I have a relationship with Jesus. Is it deep? Is it deeper? Or is it deepest? And watch this. You choose how high to go. He don't. You choose how deep to go. He doesn't. Let me tell you everything Jesus chooses except one. He chooses your destiny. He chooses your, sorry, he chooses your purpose. He chooses your ministry. But there's one thing he don't choose. Because of free will. You see, the disciples started up as babies and they became friends. How did they become friends? They have to pass one test. Who do you say I am? You are my friends if you do whatsoever I tell you. Greater love is for a man to lay down his life for his, for his friends. Let me say it again. There are seven pillars of intimacy. 
There are seven pillars of relationship. There are seven pillars of fellowship. Mm -hmm. And there are seven pillars of communion. That's why Jesus shed his blood from the Garden of Gethsemane mm -hmm, to the Mount of Gogota. He shed his blood seven times. Mm. The last words of Jesus was seven sentences on the cross. What is it about seven? Has everybody seen the revelation? Go read it. When Jesus was on the cross, he only spoke seven words. Mm. As he was walking to the Mount of Gogota, by obedience to the Father, he shed his blood seven times. Why seven? Because those are the pillars of intimacy, pillars of relationship, pillars. You can be at number one. You're not going to last. You need to get to level seven. Seven means completion. Seven means perfection. Seven means you are now rooted and grounded. Now watch this. When you reach seven, you become what you call an irreplaceable gem and pearl. That is why when you walk with him, he takes you from glory to glory. There are countless realms of glory in his face. Just as you see the color rainbows, there are different colors in the rainbow. There's also different colors of intimacy, different colors of fellowship. They're not the same color. The color for intimacy is not the same color for relationship. The father's color is green. That's why the earth is meek. You see green grass. Mm -hmm. Don't miss this. The father's favorite color is green. Well, do you know the process of how something become green? This is how Jesus teach. I'm like, I ask, I ask him, Lord, how, how did the color green become green? You can look it up. How does the color green become green? Process. So let me, let me say it again. The father's favorite color is green. You say, why is this important? Because colors represent the desire of his heart. If he shows you green, that means meekness. See, blue. Jesus' favorite color is white. That's why he says, you will walk with me in white. But there are several other colors to walk with him in. How many of us on the line want to grow in intimacy, grow in fellowship, grow in communion, grow in intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion? Then you have to know the following things I'm about to tell you. Face, heart, hand, feet. Those are places he got nailed. But the most important one is his side. Where did God take Eve from? He took a rib from Adam. Can I give a revelation? When Jesus was pierced on his side, who was formed? Who came out of his rib? Blood and water came out of his rib. The bride. So therefore, how does he wash his bride every day? Water and blood. You see, that's where you need to go put your head. It's by his heart. So you can be cleansed in the blood and his water. My sons and daughters, if you wish to be in that place, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. it will stir up a desire. Let me say it again. My sons and daughters, if you wish to be in that place, you see, he say, if you wish to be in that place, that means he don't put you there. You have to. That's why David said, watch this. There's one thing I've desired of the Lord and I will seek after. 
See, you can have desires, but you're not seeking. Many have desires, but they're not seeking after him. Seeking goes with desire. Watch this. Mm. Purify your motives. Who wants that place? So he said, tonight, we're going to pray for four things together. Purify my heart in your love. Sanctify my heart with your truth. Circumcise my heart. Everybody see that? That's four. Purify, sanctify, circumcise. But he said the purging, purge and pruning go together. Purge and prune. Or you are only at the desire level. It will be hard for you to seek. Hmm. If you're so let's break it down to ask. What, what is what is ask? What is seek? What is knock? What is strive? Look, listen, and learn. Picture this. Before the foundation of the world, before heaven and earth was created, the father says, I'm going to put man and woman on earth. And this earth will be a university to see who will graduate to the next world. That means whatever degree of intimacy you, re you see here is what's going to be in the new earth and new heaven and new Jerusalem. So he said, not all are my sheep and not all are my bride. You want me to read that for you? Let me read, let me read that letter. You want to be both. Mm -hmm. Some of these words are heavy. Not all are my sheep and not all are my bride. Many can hear me and hear me well, but not all my sheep obey me. Wow. I am not first in their lives. They have too many idols in their lives and can therefore not discern me. You should write that down. If you can't discern Jesus, then you have too many idols. Now, I'm going to tell you why. See, it's so deep. Why there must be uprooting. Why there must be tearing down. Why there must, why there must be a pulling down. Why there must be a destroying. Why does, he, why does he have to do those four things before he build and plant you? Idols. It's one. You see, I'm letting you know right now. The number one thing standing between you and him is I. And what's in the middle of pride? Mm -hmm. What's in the middle of pride? I. I'm going to read it again. Not all are my sheep. Mm. And not all are my bride. Many can hear me and hear me well, but not all my sheep obey me. I am not first in their lives. They have too many idols in their lives and cannot discern me. I am a vague imagination to them. Okay, the rest is personal, sorry. Do you have a vague imagination of him? See, Therefore, please write it down. What idols are in your garden? Because he said, it is my desire to give them the kingdom, but they have other kingdoms. An idol is a kingdom? Mm.
My desire is for you to love me. Only me. If you love something or someone more than me, that is an idol. This is why you see many people run into this prophet, that prophet, this prophet. You know why? Can I tell you the truth? They have idols. So they can't hear. They can't see. Idols block four things. Intimacy. Relationship. Fellowship and communion. Let me tell you what each one produces. Intimacy produces glory. Relationship. This is how you know you have a relationship with him. Presence. His presence. My presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. That's relationship. I need to say it again. My desire is for you to love me. Only me. What will be your choice today? Not everyone's desire is to love him and love only him. They want to have a polygamous relationship with Jesus. You say, huh? That's what he told me. Polygamous relationship with you, my king? When he tells you that, immediately you're going you're gonna to repent. Lord, am I in a polygamous relationship with you? You say, huh? Yes. You can be in a polygamous relationship with Jesus. You have other lovers, other wives. That means you're not going to be faithful. You're not going to be loyal. Mm. Do you see what is... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you see what is... Destroying our affection for him? Tonight, he said, also talk about many in my body are in a polygamous relationship with me. Polygamy? Remember what's polygamy? When you have more than one wife or more than one husband, right? You're good. Who's our husband, man? Who's our bridegroom? It's only one. That makes you, watch this. Don't, mi don't miss this. Mm -hmm. Celibacy, virginity. This is how he broke it down. Watch this. Adultery, idolatry. Take note of that. Celibacy and virginity. What is a spiritual virgin? Or who is a spiritual virgin and who is spiritually celibate? Pure and clean. Can I teach you what, how he broke it down? Look, I wish I can get on my knees and beg each and every one of you. Don't cheat on Jesus. Don't cheat on him. He's merciful. He'll forgive you 490 times a day, but you don't see the wounds and scars and bruises and stripes. It causes him. Yes, Lord. As I'm talking to you, I see a male and a female ego. Thank you, Jesus. All of us need to study the intimacy of the male and female line. Sorry, male and female ego. I am a jealous God. Sorry, let me say it again. If you love something or someone more than me, that is an idol. So, what is thing and someone? I am a jealous God. If I am not first in your life, mm, you will miss it when I speak to you. For your focus is not on me. You will see the reward of this focusing on me and my will when you turn to me. See? Everybody, what's reward? Remember what we said in the beginning? 
Reward, inheritance, covenant, promise. What is the reward? Many will be deceived. You are moving into a time when many will be deceived. Things seem to be great. And I'm also involved. But that is not always true. For the prince of this world can do signs and wonders and miracles. Ay, 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 ay. What should I tell you? Don't build your relationship with Jesus on miracle signs and wonders. You're not going to last. Can I say that again? He said the prince of the world can also do signs, wonders, miracles. So signs, wonders, and miracles, that's not approve you. Watch, therefore. That you do not be deceived. So, everyone on the line, write that down. How would the deception deceive so many? They are desperate for miracles, signs, and wonders. That's how deception starts. The snake showed Eve a, snap, a sign. She didn't die. <sighs> Come on, somebody. The snake showed her a sign. Oh, you, you're not going to surely die if you eat this tree. God knows, see, that you'll be like a God. She began to wonder, see, signs, wonders. She began to wonder. See how deception begins? Signs, wonders. Now, there are true signs, true wonders, and true miracles from the Father and Jesus. But we must have wisdom, truth, discernment, and love in this time and season, more than ever, because Jesus said there is a thin line between truth and deception. And it can happen to you and I. No one is exempted. If Peter had a revelation from the Father, and the very next moment, Satan is deceiving him. Everybody take note of that. Can I help you in this area? Jesus said to me, it is those who love me the most, like Peter, who have revelation about me the most, like John, see, who I give the keys to my kingdom and my heart. See that, like Peter, is whom Satan is targeting. Hmm. I'm not here to teach you fear base, but to make you, to make you sober, vigilant, watchful. That the number one priority in this time and season, in this hour, more than ever, is not ministry. If you are so focused on being used by God. He will replace you. Because certain things he will tell you, you're not going to obey him immediately. You say, how? Because you don't have intimacy. You don't know the way to do it. See? Watch, therefore, that you do not be deceived. For only I will tell you the truth from the lie. Only I can give you sharpness in discernment. Hmm. So what do you need? He said, only I. Nobody else can. This is why it's so important that you remove the idols and make me first in your life. Because... You will be deceived if I'm not. Whoa. You see why he said we should come back to our first love? If we don't come back to our first love, we are already in deception. Can I tell you what Jesus said? He said, 
many pursue what the world says is right. Let me go to that. Let me go to that one. But mm, let's finish this right here. Watch this. Seducing and deceiving spirits has entered into churches and ministries. When I am first in your life, one, and you ask me for the truth, two, I will open your eyes for truth and you will see. Uh oh. So many people say their eyes are open, but it's not truth. Mm -mm. The truth sets you free. It doesn't make you gossip. It doesn't make you slander. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you fault find. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you become an accuser of the brethren. The truth is to set you free from deception and help others be free from it without pointing a finger. You know what the worst deception is? John 8. Mary Magdalene was caught in adultery. Naked, by the way. No clothes. Who want to be like Jesus on the line? That's it. The Pharisees. They picked up stones to kill her. They had holiness. They had righteousness. They had truth about her sin. But they were working for Satan. Jesus said, where are your accusers? Everybody, who's the accuser of the brethren? Satan. It is the very ones who are in the church who are being fathered by Satan in these last days. Can I say that again? <laughs> there are many, Jesus said, have been sifted like wheat. Because, don't everybody watch this. They put holiness and righteousness and truth above love, which is the first and greatest. Hmm. So watch this. If my brother or my sister fall, the first commandment is love. <laughs> not holiness, not even righteousness, not even truth. My God, I feel like flying. It's love. Can I go deep? Some years ago, I said, Lord Jesus, I want more of you. More of your face. More of your heart. You got to hear this. He said, if you want more of me, give me more of you. That's one. Two. You must increase your love for others for me to increase the visitations with you. Hmm. He didn't say increase your holiness. He didn't say increase even your righteousness or truth. He said increase your love for others. And I will increase the intimacy, the relationship. See, everybody wants increase, but they don't want to decrease. Decrease to love. Hmm. Decrease to humility. Decrease that's what, that's what the first friend of the bridegroom, John the Baptist said, that I may decrease and that he may eat. Who wants Jesus to increase in every area? You have to decrease. And many don't want to decrease because they're always praying for increase. Uh oh Oh, the, the Lord is sending you increase. Everybody receive your increase right now. Yes, Lord, I receive increase. And you haven't decreased? You will increase in pride. A part of your intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion with Jesus. Don't miss this. Tonight, I'm going to go a little high. Not only are you to be face-to-face -face with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, you must also be face-to-face -face with your neighbor. Heart-to-heart -heart with your neighbor. Hand-to-hand -hand with your neighbor. You know how Bible says, seek my face? Are you seeking the face of your brother and sister? Hmm. Is your heart saying to your friend and your sister, 
and even your enemy. My heart says, I'll seek your face. See, everybody look at the first and greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your body. Look at the second. Love your neighbor as I have loved you. This is what Jesus has to tell me. Not only, this was what? About four or five years ago, I was seeking his face during the 120 days fasting. He said, I also want you to watch this. Everybody, this is deep. Seek the face of your brothers and sisters. That means when I look at your face, everyone on the line, if I look at your face, Lord, should I tell them? I will, because it will help you. He said, watch this. When you look at your brother and sister's face, there are some of them, their faces is the father. Some of them, their faces is mine. He said, from today going, wherever you walk and you look at people's faces, you will see who the father created and who I created. See, likeness. Some of us have big noses. Do you know whose nose you got? Mm -hmm. Some of us have big eyes. Do you know whose eyes you have? Some of us have small ears. If I look at your face right now, I can tell you who, which one of the Godhead, which one you have the most dominant and the one who you need to seek the most out of the three. I'm going to say it again. This will help you. You would, eh, if when you learn this, you will always see your neighbor in the image and likeness of God, not their sin. You will never fault find. You will see Jesus in them. Who wants this? It's a price, but it's worth having. Let me say it again. During the 120 days shut in, it was on the 61st day. And normally before, before I will have a visitation, he would tell me, go take a shower first. Brush your teeth, take a shower, anoint your head, and come and sit in the closet. I'll be there at 7 a.m. in the morning. Yes, my friends, I'm, I'm teaching you some secrets. You can't just get up and you... Let me be a little... Let me be Kofi. You can't be stinking in his presence. One day I came to Jesus. He said, go and brush your teeth before you talk to me. Cleanliness is next to holiness. And Jesus walked in. He said, you have asked for more of me and you will have more of me. But he said, you would not just find me by you seeking my face. You will also find me in the high and low in your brother and your sister. He said, you will find me among the poor. Go and visit them. You are visiting me. You will find me in the widows. Don't miss this. Everybody, don't miss this. He said, there are some, when you look at their facial features, you will see who the, who, we, watch this. Oh, I'm getting excited. Forgive me. Okay, let me give you an example. If you're on the line and you have a small mouth, you're going to be, watch this, you're going to speak for Jesus. No, sorry. If you have a big mouth, not a small mouth, sorry. Jesus have a big mouth. Father has a small mouth. Jesus have a small nose, but the Father's nose is big. Jesus have small eyes. The Father's eyes is big, you see. But Jesus have big ears. The Father has small ears. So when I look at people, oh, wow. That person is supposed to be seeking the Father the most, not Jesus only. See, you would know who will work with the Father by their body features. You know how that keeps you clean and pure? To some of you on the line, you might not understand this fully, but you know how that keeps you pure and, pure and clean from not judging people? Because they are in their process and all their dirt is surfacing? 
if you on the line and you want more of Jesus and more of the Father and more of the Holy Spirit, he will tell you, increase the way you love. Watch this. Your friends and your enemies. For I am also in your enemies. Find me there. See, seek and you shall. Seeking is not only spiritual. There is also a natural speaking in your neighbor. So I'll come around some people. Ever since then, this person, he will, he will open their hearts and I will see the treasure in their heart, gold. But it's, watch this, it's covered with a lot of mud. It's covered with a lot of dirt. Everybody see that? Religion. It covers your treasure. Beware. Let me read that again. Many, he says, when I am first in your life and you ask me for truth, I will open your eyes and you will see. Watch this. Hmm. Look, around the line, we're not going to be blind, okay? The chief shepherd is speaking. Many of my people follow blindly after other people. Pastors, ministers, and leaders. Do you know one? Do you know one way you are blind? <laughs> That's what happened to Lucifer. He was blinded by his own light. He was blinded by his own beauty. Who don't want to be blind? Don't blindly follow after people. This is why you can't see him because you are, see? I'm trying to help take the veils of our eyes today. I'm trying to help take the scales of your eyes today. What are those veils in your eyes that's not making you see him face to face? One is idols. Two is blindness. You say, I'm not blind. We all have levels of blindness. We all do. We have spiritual blindness. We have natural blindness. How? You are following people. You're not following him. Watch this. And the people that you follow, the moment they make a mistake, as a human being, you begin to look at Jesus in a different way. Oh, I thought he was a face-to-face -face prophet. I thought he was Jesus' friend. How can he do this? Now you're offended. Because you were not looking for Jesus. You're looking at the man or the woman. Do you see truth or sanctification is to separate? This is Jesus. This is Kofi. Don't put them both together. Hmm. This is what Moses told. God told Moses, sanctify me in the eyes of the people. Everybody, what I just told you, it's a major pruning of face-to-face. -face. Sanctification in your eyes. Where? Can I teach you how what sanctification is? Knowing Jesus as a man and knowing him as God. You have to separate his deities and don't put them all together. Oh, oh, because I just put myself, let me be vulnerable. Oh, he must be the closest thing to Jesus. Be very careful. Was Lucifer who was the closest fell? Lucifer had pride even in his relationship with Jesus. He thought he was better than the other angels. You got to be careful. He thought because he was the only anointed angel that he was the only angel that could be in the garden. Mm -hmm. And he was. He was the only angel, Jesus told me, that could go to those four places. The courts, the garden, the mountain. See that? He was in the Eden, the garden of God. He had these intimate places as an angel. My friends, how did he fall?
he was blinded first. How? When he will go into, this, watch this, whenever he will go to the high mountain, the most holy place, it's called the mountain of thrones, and he will come down from the mountain, all the angels in heaven will see God on him, Jehovah. They don't see him. They see God on him. Oh, don't miss this. The angels begin to worship and praise God that was on him. What do you think he would do to him? Oh, wow, they're worshiping me? They're praising me? What, what do they see that I don't see? Mm, is somebody catching that? Mm. What are these angels seeing on me that I don't see? Bam, this is how many of us fall. We listen to the praises of people. The worship. That's how Lucifer got into idolatry. He's the one who began all this idolatry worship. He is the original of religion. Do you see? Idolatry made him now commit adultery. And he wants you and I to do the same in our walk with Jesus. We got to be careful. What's idolatry? When people see the glory of God on you, when people see the presence of God on you, when people see the hand of God or the face of God or the heart of God flowing in you and through you, they immediately put you close to God. They're setting you up. Take note of that. Don't be blinded by your own light. Meaning, watch for these two veils. I'm telling you, look. Adultery. I. When you begin to exalt yourself above measure because of the visions and dreams and the glory, you now look down on people because you think you are somewhere you are not. That's what happened to Lucifer. Please, I'm trying to dress and keep you from the number one enemy of intimacy so you can grow in humility. And humility is the path to victory. Watch this. Hmm. Many of my people follow blindly after other people, pastors, ministers, leaders. Come and ask me if someone speaks the truth. Have you been doing it? Everyone on the line? You should be doing now while you're hearing this. You should be asking Jesus right now, is he speaking the truth or is he lying? The Bible says, test all spirits to see whether they be of God. We're in the end times. We're in the last days. Can I tell you the truth? You cannot afford to fall into the first category of Matthew 24, 4. Let no man deceive you. Because deception will make you lose everything in the garden. Like Adam and Eve. He told me this. Eve was deceived. Adam was seduced. I said, wait a minute. Everybody, please, wait a minute. You see that? Seduction make you lose his face. But deception make you lose his heart. He said, my son, it was tragic words my father said to Adam and Eve. Tragic words. You know what tragic words means? That all they could experience now was his presence and his voice. But it was not like that from the beginning. It was face to face. It was heart to heart. How did they fall from face to presence? Everybody, do you see? Do you know? Yes, this will stir hunger in you. It has to. Because we refuse to be uh, uh, status quo. Can I tell you the truth? Having his presence and hearing his voice you have still fallen. Because that's where Adam and Eve fell. He said to me, my son, my presence and my voice 
is for the fallen and the weak. Whenever they fall and they and they are weak, my presence will come with my voice, like Adam. Hmm. Everybody, isn't that tragic words of intimacy? You used to be face to face with me every morning. Now all you experience is my presence and my voice. You are falling. That's not what. That's what I said. What? Mm, yes, yes, Father. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Adam, where are you? Some some of you may ask. Didn't God know where He was? You don't understand. Where are you means you are not in my face. You are not in that realm. You and I used to be in. Where are you now? That is the question the Father is asking this generation. Where are you? Oh, I feel his presence. Don't stay there. That's falling. Look, ever since Jesus told me that, I'm like, my God. So your presence is not enough. It's only for the weak and the fallen. So whenever you fall, his presence will come and lift you up again. Right? His voice will direct you back to his face. Don't stay there. That's not what he originally had in his heart to have with men and women. Is everybody understanding that when Jesus was walking with me in the garden, he said, my son, those were tragic words that my father told Adam and Eve. They could only experience his presence and his voice. That means you are falling. Can I be honest? I was trembling. That means I'm not living up to the standard of what you've called us. Presence and voice means, can you see, a church that is not face to face has fallen. Even if his presence is there. Is anybody understanding that? Wow. How do I know a place has fallen? Okay, dude, his presence is here. I feel his presence. That don't mean they're in his face. It's, everybody, please, time travel right now to the garden. What was the original blueprint of the intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion between God and man. Yes, Father, I'll go deep. He said, in the beginning, I created the man and put him in the garden. My heart was to bring him into the father realm. Adam was supposed to be in the father realm, but God first put him in the God realm. So Adam was supposed to be in the father realm by eating the tree of life. He was supposed to eat the tree of life. Had he ate the tree of life, he will be in the father realm. Yes, father. Then now he can have dominion and subdue. He never got to the father realm. He was seduced. I just lean my head on Jesus. Some of the things I'm telling you are uh, experiences during that 120 days. I just lean my head on Jesus' chest. I said, please. I don't ever want to fall from your face. He picked my, he pulled my head with his two hands from his shoulder. He said, look at that tree. Everybody, look at that tree. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. It turned Right before my eyes, it turned into death and hell. A portal. Some of you have seen those movies, Marvel movies, where there's a portal open. Right before my eyes, he said, look at that tree. Death and hell. He said, I put that tree in the garden for Lucifer. For Adam to put him there. But Lucifer put him there first. You see why God put the tree there? Some people say, oh, if God knew Adam would fall, why did he put a tree there? They don't understand dominion. They don't understand sonship. Adam was supposed to eat the tree of life. Had he ate the tree of life, he wouldn't have taken the fruit. I opened my mouth while I said, what? 
because he would have known his father's discernment. Adam was not in the father realm. Is everybody hearing this? Adam was not in the father realm. Neither was Eve. So face to face was just the beginning. The end was going to be the father realm. They never got there. Uh, let me say it again. Can I say it again? Let's go back to the beginning. The garden. In the beginning. Face to face. Between man and woman. With God. Every morning. How did they fall from that place? Deception. And seduction. Jesus told me. Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. Came into the garden. He said Eve was deceived. Then she seduced Adam. Hmm. Hmm. What you taste, you want other people to fall for it. She tasted and saw death and hell. That's why she didn't die. She saw it. Come on, somebody. Don't miss that. Jesus said to me, she tasted the tree. It was a fig tree, by the way. It wasn't apple. Don't listen to them liars. It was a fig tree. And she saw death and hell. You realize her eyes didn't open until she gave it to the man. Come on. She was already dead while the devil was using her. And Jesus said to me, had Adam at the tree of life, he wouldn't have taken the fruit. I'm about to give another revelation on business. He lost face to face and was reduced to my presence and my voice. Tragic words. And that's what made me now ask him, how do we come back to your face from falling from that place? Everybody, do we see it? Isn't that, shouldn't that wake you up? Wait a minute. I can go to a church and I'm feeling God's presence. But I'm not in his face. I'm sorry to tell you, that church has fallen. That church is weak. Because the whole purpose of Jesus building the church was for face to face. Was to bring us back to the garden. Everybody see why he said, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell, that's that tree. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is the gates of death and hell. I was stunned. I held Jesus' hand so tight. And that's when he said, you have to go through death and hell with me for that tree to be out of our garden. That means there are two trees in everybody's garden. Which one are you eating? I will go through death and hell all over again just for our marriage and our friendship. Hey, but you see the deception? What's deception? When the enemy told Eve, you will be like God, meaning exalt yourself above the man and God. Everybody hey, look, at, look at the pride. Yes, Lord, I will tell them. Mm -hmm. He said when the snake came, the snake came in agreement with Satan. And three things was released on Eve. Pride of life. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. Everybody, look, just look at Eve right now. She looked at the tree. Lust of the eyes. Mm-hmm. 
love for the flesh. Because remember what Jesus said? Remember Adam said, flesh of my flesh. And then pride entered her. Pride entered her life. Do you see how the enemy, watch this, mm -hmm. sexually transmitted her to death and hell. Because that was intimacy between the snake and the woman. Intimacy is conversation. And this is the whole purpose why Jesus came, everybody on the line, to bring you and I back to the face. Therefore, if we're not seeking his face, we've already fallen. Dude, does everybody understand? Wait a minute. His presence, in, I love your presence. Moses said, watch this. He said, watch this. God said, Moses, my presence will go with you. He said, no, 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 no. I need your glory. See, Moses went beyond the presence. Oh. Show me your glory. That means Moses was saying, wait a minute. Is everybody getting this revelation? Isn't that deep? Whoa, Moses, you can't see my face yet because you, you are from the lineage of Adam. <laughs> come on, come on, somebody. You are from the lineage of Adam. I can't show you my face yet because I can only give you my presence because after Adam, all men fell. So the only thing you can get is his presence. He said, mm -mm. show me your glory. You see that? That means he knew beyond his presence was something more. But to get there, watch this, don't miss this. He said, you can't see my face and live, right? So that means death was in the face of Adam. And death was in the face of Moses. So everybody look at it. Just, just look at it. Life is in the face of the Father, death in the face of Moses. What will happen? He will die. Because he had, from Adam, man has eaten that tree and is in us. So you can't touch the tree of life. Is somebody catching a revelation? You can't touch the tree of life. You will surely die. So, Adam, uh, Moses, I'm trying to preserve you from not dying because of your condition. You are still under the law and the penalty is death. We're about to pray. Do you see why these 80 days must be all about his face? And you don't stop until you find his face. Speak and you shall find. Please, everyone on the line, it's not enough to settle for his presence and his voice only. You must go beyond his presence in his face. Mm, watch this. Not all teaching are birthed by my Holy Spirit. Many teachings are birthed by seducing and deceptive spirits. Test the teaching with me. Many teaching cannot be tested against my word for many things were not written down. But I will show you if someone or something is true or false. If you wish to have that place, purify your motive. Be on the lookout for the devices of men that Satan will try to draw you into. Wow. Everybody get it? Is somebody writing that down? Don't miss. That's major. Oh, so if I want the purest place mm -hmm, in the Father and Jesus forevermore, 
I got to be on the lookout for one thing and one thing only. One, check your motive. Two, be on the lookout. That means you need eagle eyes. Be on the lookout. Watch this. Mm -hmm. It's deep. For the devices of men. He didn't say the devices of Satan. That Satan will try to draw you into. We're going to break that down. What are the devices of men? That the enemy is trying to make you take the bait. Oh. So you mean to tell me that Satan uses men to draw you into something? To draw you out of Jesus? Yes. By the time you realize you have lost the relationship with Jesus and now you are in religion. And many don't know they're in religion because the enemy drew them into what? That biting, gossip, slander, fault finding, accusations. The same mouth you used to say, I love you, you are now cursing your neighbor. Can you see the enemy? I have been preparing you to be a Moses. And lead my people into the promised land of intimacy with me. The enemy never rests. He is continually looking for ways to steal your peace. Is everybody hearing this? And his favorite is perfectionism, judgment, and condemnation. Watch for those three. Watch for those three. Oh, I don't think I'm perfect for Jesus. That's the enemy trying to steal your peace. Be careful. Your peace. Can I tell you four things that are very important working with Jesus? Love, joy, peace, rest. You got to guard your heart. Meaning you got to protect these four. Oh, it will affect you. Mm -hmm. Remember, watch this. Love is intimacy. Fellowship is rest. Everybody, you see, don't miss this. Mm -hmm. The communion is grace. But the relationship is what? Peace. So fellowship, rest. When you're in fellowship with Jesus, he give you rest. Now, the enemy is after your peace. That means after your relationship part. So watch this one. That's why I wish I can draw it on the board so you can see it. Relationship, fellowship, intimacy, communion. He's after those four. Okay, I can't get Kofi in his intimacy, but I'm going to go after his fellowship. Fellowship is his rest so how can i make him restless if i can get his fellowship with jesus i can now get his peace this is how he operates if i can get his fellowship with jesus that means i'll make him restless the moment he's restless he's not gonna have peace no more boom i got his what his communion now he's targeting the highest one which is intimacy and relationship Yes, fellowship is important. Communion is important. But the, the most important one is intimacy. Intimacy gives you love. Mm -hmm. Don't miss it. Write it down. When you're intimate with Jesus, he gives you love. When you are in fellowship with him, he gives you rest. See the reward? Mm -hmm. When you are in relationship with him, he gives you peace. But when you're in communion, mm -hmm, he gives you grace. So if he's after your communion, he's coming, with, he's coming after your, the grace. Protect this four with your whole life like a treasure. Don't let him steal it. Let me say it again. Intimacy with Jesus. One of the rewards is love. Your identity is in intimacy. Second one, fellowship. When you are in fellowship with Jesus, the reward is what? Rest. That's what he told Moses. My presence will go to you and I'll give you rest. That was fellowship. Mm -hmm. What's the next one? Relationship. Peace. So here you see that right here? The enemy is continually looking for ways to steal your peace. Let's put it in there. He's still, he wants to steal your relationship. Remember, he comes to steal, kill, destroy. And how does he do it? Perfectionism. He makes you feel or makes you think you are not the perfect fit for Jesus. But making you look at all your imperfections. You know what he's trying to do? Steal your peace. 
the moment you start looking at yourself, can I tell you the two things Jesus told me in the garden during my seven-year process when we're in the garden? I saw a marvel. The tree of life that was in the middle of the garden turned into a man. That man was Jesus. And then, watch this. He walked to the tree of knowledge of good and evil with his bare hands. And he uprooted the tree with his bare hands and put it on his back. And he said, this is your cross I'm carrying. Huh? The cross is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Everybody, you see it? The cross. You said, what? what? Now let's go to the mountain. He said, now, when I saw him uproot that tree of knowledge of good and evil that was in my garden, he put it on his back. Bare hands. Jesus is strong. He didn't use no weapons. With his bare hands, he uprooted the tree from the ground. You could see the hole still there when he uprooted it. And there was only one tree left, the tree of life. But he said, come with me. And that's when immediately we were on the Mount of Gogota and I saw two thieves next to him, good and evil. Did everybody catch that? The two thieves you see on the cross, one was good, one was evil. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You just said, which one will you choose? Evil or good? I said, Lord, I choose you. Tree of life. And then he said, watch this. You ready? Good is pride. Evil is self. If you want pride and self out of the garden, pride, everybody said, pride is good. You say, huh? Yes. Pride come in the area of your strength. Self come in the area of your weakness. So the two things the enemy wants to project in you is pride and self. So let's break it down. If he wants to steal your relationship, enemy wants to steal your relationship with Jesus, watch what he does. Remember what relationship is. Relationship gives you what? Grace. No, grace is communion. Mm -hmm. Relationship is peace, right? He goes after your relationships in the natural. Once he can take your peace through a relationship with somebody, you're not going to have peace with Jesus. You're going to blame him. Lord, why did you allow this to happen to me? You see? Your peace is gone. When you don't have peace, you're offended. Now your relationship with Jesus has been hit. Let me tell you what he said. He said, intimacy, relationship, fellowship, communion. You must also have intimacy, relationship, fellowship, and communion with your brothers and sisters. He says, he said, watch this. He said, guard your heart with me, but protect your heart with them. Meaning anybody comes against your fellowship with your friends. Anybody comes to try and sow seeds in your communion with your brothers and sisters. Know that the enemy is trying to sow seed. He said this. You are worth fighting for. Jesus said you are worth fighting for. And I'm willing to go through death and hell just to dress our marriage and keep our friendship. That means I will, I will, you are worth fighting for. He said, do the same. Fight for the God ordained relationships I put in your life because how you treat them is how you treat the Father and I. You can't be lukewarm, everybody. Oh, I love Jesus, but you are cold towards your brother and your sister. Now you have a partial relationship with Jesus. It's not full. And I said again, the enemy never rests. That means he's restless. Which area we, we talk about rest is? Uh -huh. 
If he never rests, he's coming after your rest. Intimacy is love. Mm -hmm. What gives you fellowship? Give you rest. So you know how he take your rest? He don't want you to fellowship with anybody. And he make you offended. And when you're offended by people doing you wrong, you isolate yourself. And when you isolate yourself and you're not around people, then now a cloud of darkness come around your head and now you're not at peace with yourself. Now you want to commit suicide. That's how he works. The enemy isolates you like a black sheep alone just to kill you. So loneliness is dangerous. The only time you should be alone is with the Father and Jesus. If you are alone without them, all, all your brothers and sisters in the natural, you are in danger. Because the enemy will cloud your judgment when nobody loves you. And then, watch this. He will, the enemy will point out to you all the wrongs people have done to you just as an excuse not for you to love no more. Now you are becoming cold, bro. Do you see how he's fathering people in the church? Yes, I said it. Satan is fathering people in the church. How? Their love walk is on E. And now their tank is filled with hate. The enemy will drain your love first and then fill it with hate. You have to guard your hearts, my friends on the line. Guard your heart means your first one, guard your heart, your heart with your relationship with Jesus. Be loyal, be faithful. But your second one is important as the first. If you betray your friend, you betray Jesus. Hmm. That's what he told me. Because betrayal is not accepted in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is all about loyalty. And can I tell you how he broke it down? He said, watch this. He said... Loyalty is greater than faithfulness. Mm -hmm. He said faithfulness is deeper. Loyalty is greater. He said love is the greatest, but trust is deeper than love. So you can't put them all in the same rank of integrity of heart. Obedience is the highest. Trust is the deepest. So watch this. You can be faithful, but not loyal. Can I break it down? Faithfulness is for fellowship. Loyalty is for communion. So, can you see how Judas lost all four? Everybody look at Judas. He lost intimacy. He lost relationship. He lost fellowship. He lost communion. How? The enemy entered his what? Heart. You see why you have to guard your heart? Now, you say, oh, how can the enemy enter my heart? One way and one way only. Offense. Opportunist. Traitor. Money. Judas was a friend. He lost it all. Because he did not guard his heart against offense. Have you seen it? The moment you're offended, do you know what the offense is coming to do? Strip you of every relationship you have with Jesus. If he don't come to you, you're going to commit suicide like Judas. Jesus wept. I was granted by grace to see after Jesus said his finish of the cross, when his soul came out of his body and his spirit went to the Father, the first place he went was death and then hell. And he passed by death. Death had the soul... Judas. So death was taking Judas to hell. And Jesus said to me, that, watch this, the sentence for betrayal is death. Everybody you see, the sentence for betrayal in a kingdom is that's why Lucifer was kicked out. He's a traitor. See, when you understand the righteousness of the kingdom, when you understand the integrity of the kingdom, it guards your intimacy with the king. You say, how do you guard or dress and keep your intimacy with him? Integrity of hearts.
What are those hearts that guard your relationship, that guard your fellowship, that guard your communion, that guard your intimacy? There are hearts that guard. Hmm, watch this. He's continually looking for ways to steal your peace. Tonight, we're going to ask for those four. And what we're going to do when we pray. Lord, guard my heart with your face, with your heart, with your hand, with your name. Because three things he told me is coming in waves like never before. Can I tell you what he said? He said he's going to go through three stages of betrayal. He said, just like his last days, he went, watch the three, Thomas, doubt, Judas, betrayal, Peter, denial. He said, it's about to happen again in the end, but greater. And they are coming from my friends. These are people who are friends of Jesus. They're going to deny him. Because of the persecution that's coming, many are going to deny knowing Jesus. Because of the persecution that's coming, many are going to betray him and go to other gods. And like doubting Thomas, they're going to doubt. Watch for those three. Betrayer, denier, doubt. Steal, kill, destroy. If it happened to his three friends, Thomas was Jesus' friend, Judas was Jesus' friend, Peter was his best friend, how much more you and I? That's why we got to be brides. A friend is closer, but a bride is deeper. He will protect his brides more than his friends. Because he laid down his life for his friends, but he died for his wife. So I'm not saying friendship is not enough, but don't stay there. Because if you stay a friend, you can betray him. But a bride, will, he told me a bride can never betray him. Because they are one spirit. A friend is not one spirit with Jesus. You see, friends are with him. Brides are in him. It's a difference. Your friends don't live with you. They visit you. But your bride is in you. You are in her. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, face of my face, heart of my heart, hand of my hand. See that? Will of my will. See that? That's a bride. His favorite is perfectionism. You got to watch that area. Everyone on the line, watch that arrow, perfectionism. He told me, I can only share, everyone on the line, experience with you. One season I was battling with my weaknesses, my faults, my shortcomings, my failures. I mean, I was at my lowest, going through the darkest time in my walk with Jesus. And I came to him with tears, with wounds, with scars. And that's when he proposed, the first proposal. But I told him, Lord, I'm not perfect. I'm not fit to marry you. You know what he said? I never chose you to be perfect, but to be my bride. I didn't call you to be perfect. I called you to be my bride. That, watch this. Boom. That veil of perfection, gone. Then he taught me the balance. I am perfect. My love is perfect for your imperfections. Beautiful balance. It, two perfect people, they can't walk together. One has to be imperfect and one perfect. And they balance each other out. For your imperfections, I need your imperfections to love you more. I will use your imperfections to perfect those things concerning you. He gave me peace. But I knew where it was coming from. The enemy threw that arrow. Let me say it again. I'm on the line. You are worthy. You are fit to be his bride. Don't let the enemy use your imperfections as an excuse not to marry Jesus. Not to walk with Jesus. Well, I'm not fit for him. I have these problems. Jesus never looked at your problems when he chose you. He looked at your heart. 
and he saw the end from the beginning, you would choose him. Look, can I go deep? Jesus told me one day, I knew your humanity. Like you have weaknesses, you have faults, but I see your end and who you will become. Look, he knows in the end you will love him the most. That's why he goes to the end and choose you from the beginning. That means you're going to make it. But don't leave or forsake him in time of your weakness, in time of your faults, in time of your shortcomings. That's when your relationship with him, intimacy with him, fellowship with him, communion with him is tested the most because the enemy is on your humanity. While I am standing, everybody watch this. So while the enemy is attacking you with perfectionism, judgment, and condemnation, watch for those three. He said, while I am standing by smiling at the work you completed, though it's still messy. You say, huh? Yes. When you think you are a mess, he's smiling. Don't let the devil ever lie to you. Jesus mad at me. No. He's not mad at you. He's in love with you. How about that? There's nothing you can say or do to change the way he sees you. There's nothing you can do to separate him from loving you. Nothing. If you make your bed in hell, he'll come and visit you. And still tell you I love you, though you rejected him on earth. I've been to hell with him. I saw it. They were cussing him out, calling him names. And yet, he said, I love you. Can you see the real Jesus? We were walking in hell. And because his father has already set the judgment, he can't change it. But it is his wish to get them all out of hell. But he can't because his father is greater than him. And the father has set the judgment. And when the father sets the judgment, the son is in agreement. But it is Jesus had to save them all because he's a savior. And he walked by, he walked by one, and then he would tell them the reason why they are down there. And they'll be screaming, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, get me out of here. He said, I'm sorry. The father has set the judgment. And they will cuss him out. And he would tell them, I love you. Who told you Jesus is walking around mad at what people say or think? He's not affected by it because his love is greater than all. Don't allow Satan to character assassinate Jesus to you. Because he will. He will tell you Jesus is something he's not. That's character assassination. You got to watch for that. Oh, God is mad at you. That's the condemnation crew. Oh, you can't pray. You're always falling asleep. Oh, God is mad at you. You're not praying in the watches. Look at your legs behind. You think that's you talking? No, that's a demon of condemnation. It's a, it's a crocodile. Trying to twist your mind about the father. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have to guard and protect your relationship with Jesus. He is covering you, but you got to do your part. And I accept the lies of Satan in your garden. Uproot them because lies bring anxiety. Fear, lies, anxiety, addiction, obsession. Watch for those five. They come to attack your identity. Take note of that. Watch this. In the twinkle of an eye, I will finish the job, clean up the mess and leave it spotless. In the meantime, each level is being completed and the building is rising higher and higher. I am not a mean-spirited taskmaster. I am a lover of your soul. I on the line, are you struggling? Oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I think Jesus is mad at me. Oh God, what have I done? I'm not doing everything right. Be careful. Love is the standard, not righteousness. 
oh, I'm not doing everything right. I feel like I'm wrong. And he's standing there smiling. I still love you. Love will not allow me to do it without you. You're the love of my soul. I don't know how nobody will want to be his best friend or marry him. I don't know how. Maybe I'm crazy. To be with a person like that, even when I don't meet his standard of holiness and righteousness, he still loves me even more. Because we beat ourselves up when we don't live up to his standard. He doesn't impose or force his standard on you. Love is the way. You see why love is your protection against even self-righteousness. Can, can I say, can I, say mm -hmm. I was beating myself up. Yes. I was hard on myself. Yes. So Jesus said this. I am not a, a mean spirited taskmaster. Do this, do that. I am the lover of your soul. Ever so happy to see you about your work with me with a heart of love. Wow. While you are beating yourself up, he's happy for you. Can you see? Look, everyone on the line. Kick Satan out of your garden immediately. He a liar. He will, look, he will paint a false image of Jesus to you. Just to character assassinate Jesus to you. And you know what he uses? He uses that same tree. His tricks have not changed. We just haven't matured as snakes. I mean, wise as a serpent. See that? Watch this. When the days go badly, I understand. I see the forces opposing you. I watch, I watch you wade through them as much sorry, with as much love and patience as you can muster. And I'm pleased with you that you persevere no matter how messy it looks. You are still, commit, you are still committed to seeing it through. But you cannot have a heart of love if you are continually looking over your shoulder at me, fearing I'm displeased with you. None of us are like that. I was. You can't be looking over. Oh, oh, I didn't get up at fourth watch. I didn't do fourth watch today. I didn't read my Bible today. Oh, God, you are beating yourself up. I used to be that way. He said, have I ever beat you up? I have never beat you. So why are you beating yourself up? Bang, veil gone. The veil lifted. Boom. He is the one who removed the veils. He said, I've never beaten you up. Why are you beating yourself? Love yourself the way I love you. Then you can now love your neighbor the way I love you. See the triangle? You cannot love your neighbor if you have not experienced his love for you. Mm -hmm. Accept it first, then give it away. You cannot give to your neighbor what you have not received from him. It's a, it's a transaction. Receive love from him. Mm -hmm. Become that love. And then go and give it in measure to your brother. And then come back to Jesus and receive more. It is more blessed to give than receive love. Watch this. Uh huh. You cannot continually be looking over your shoulder at me. Fearing, I'm displeased with you. That displeasure will watch this. Watch this. That displeasure will carry over in how you deal with others. So when you think Jesus is not pleased with you, you start being displeased with people. Be careful. Your attitude changes immediately, and you start mistreating everybody else because you think you've made because you think you've you've displeased him. Now you're not you're not even pleased with your dog. You got to be careful. Perfectionism, condemnation, and judgment is like procrastination, slothfulness, and laziness. It comes to change your attitude. Be careful. Put on the Beatitudes. Don't have an attitude. 
put on the Beatitudes every day. Before you leave the house, you got to put on your armor. Watch this. That is why you need dwelling prayer. You need to experience my joy and my satisfaction with you. You need to bond and soak up my love I feel for you. Then you will be encouraged and strengthened to begin the game tomorrow, overflowing with your love for your brothers and sisters. So I'm asking you, my bride, come to me, knowing that whatever you have done or failed to do during the day, I love you. Wow. Do you see? What you do or say, don't change the way he loves you or see you. He's the same person. He's the same today, yesterday and forever. He don't change. We do. And religion is part of the reason. It's not just the fallen nature. It's really religion. He hates religion because it attacks intimacy. It att Watch this. Religion attacks his heart and nature about you. While he is merciful, religion makes him judgmental. Mm -hmm. While he is loving, religion makes him like a punishing God. Watch this. You want to be ready to go deep? Why would God punish you when he put his punishment on Jesus for you? Religion. Jesus took your judgment. He took your wrath. He took your punishment of death and hell. So when the father look at Jesus, he don't punish you because Jesus took it for you. That's why you should stay close to Jesus. It's like, you are like, you are like, you are like, Jesus is like your protection. Father, I die for him. The court case, the court case is over. One word. One time the enemy was accusing me left and right. He had evidence on the table. Watch this. He had videos everything in court of heaven. And Jesus said one word. He showed the father his wounds. Case over. <laughs> Who said Jesus would change his mind because of what people say about you? Who told you Jesus will change his heart and mind about you because of how people think of you or even how you think of yourself? He's head over heels in love with you. And until you make him first, them idols going, them idols is going to make you think twice. Does Jesus really love me? I've made all these mistakes. You know what that is? It's a snake. Make you question your relationship, just like Eve. Did God say? Be careful with them thoughts coming in your mind on the line. Them questions be popping up. Does God really love me? You know, there's a snake talking to you. That's not you talking to yourself. Who told you you are naked on the line? Mm -hmm. That's what the father asked Adam and Eve. Who told you you're naked? I say the same thing to each and every one of us. Who told you you're not worthy? Who told you you're not fit? Stop looking at yourself. My first visitation I ever had with the father was a rebuke. <laughs> it was. In the garden. He said, don't ever look at yourself. Look at my son. That's pride of self-centeredness. And that's the root of all failure. Just because you fall, don't mean you fail. Because you never stopped loving me. Pride left immediately. You cannot fight pride on your own. You need to hear from the father. Let him pour his love on you. Pride will leave. You say it again. Just because you fall, don't mean you have failed me. Because you never stopped loving me in spite of your humanity and your weakness. See, in spite of your humanity on the line, in spite of your weaknesses, in spite of your faults, in spite of your failures. If you can be bold and courageous and say, Jesus, I will never stop loving you. Ah, bro, Shah. That's the kind of bold bride he's attracted to. And in this time and season, the foundation that you are laying will be the key to manifestations.
I'm going to say it again. This will encourage you. We're going to pray now. It's for five, ten minutes. But effective prayer of the righteous avail much. I'm asking you, come to me. Knowing that whatever you have done. Come on, somebody. Whatever you have done. It doesn't mean you should compromise. Okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this. I know Jesus still loves me. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't presume on his mercy. Don't presume on his grace. No. But whatever you have done, good or bad, right or wrong, come on, somebody. Or fail to do during the day. I love you. And I preach, I appreciate your efforts more than you can understand. Wow. He thanks you. Thank you for being my friend and you and your vomit. <laughs> Thank you for being my bride and you and your dirt. And I know only I only know one man who will get in the dirt with you, Jesus Christ. People, when they see your dirt, they walk away. He don't. When he see your dirt, he get in because he see the he see the treasure. Can you imagine a holy man willing to get in the dirt with you? All because of love. So that means love is what makes you holy. Holiness without love is religion. But love with holiness is relationship. You have not stopped loving him, so you have not failed. Don't think you were a failure. Because the enemy will use your past failures to make you quit. Be careful. Let's open our lines, please, wherever we are. Give us this day and then everybody put in there. What do you need daily? Give us this day. Uh, daily. Mm -hmm. What do you need daily? Where are you struggling in your intimacy with him on the line? Where are you struggling in your relationship with him? He said, I will give you wisdom and grace to overcome and conquer. Mm -hmm. Why are you struggling? I'm struggling in my communion okay yeah i know my communion i'm su i'm suffering there relationship yeah we relate but on my communion with jesus i'm not communicating right boom that's the area you pray right now discern i'm not being intimate with him because intimacy is based on seed and birth it's like in the natural when you're intimate with a woman you put seed in her she's gonna give it back to you she'll give you a baby same thing with jesus he wants to sow his seed in you so you can birth his glory, birth his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Intimacy, me, you, you resemble him. You look like him in nature and life. Mm -hmm. So wherever we are, those on the line also, yes, you can unmute your line. Air on the line, please, you can unmute your line. Going together. Everybody, you can unmute your line, please. Yes. The effective prayer of the righteous avail much. It's not about praying one hour. It's about praying the right. What did, what did Esther say? If this be the right thing to ask, that was in one hour. She asked the right thing. It's about asking the right thing right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I'm on the line. Yes, you can unmute the line. Mm -hmm. Let us open our hearts and our minds to Jesus now. Fix your eyes and your heart on him. The decree is... Purify my heart with your love. Sanctify my heart with your truth. 
my heart. Make my heart a place of love and truth at all times. We'll just talk to him wherever you are. Talk to him wherever you are now. Let's open our mouths right now. Let's talk to him wherever you are right now. Yes, Lord. Make my heart after your heart. Make my heart after your heart. Make my heart after your heart, Lord. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily intimacy. Our daily relationship. Yes, Lord. Give me eyes of dove to see your heart. Give me eyes of love to see your face. We want to win your heart on all levels. We want to win your heart on all levels. You are my greatest prize and reward, Father. You are my greatest prize and reward, Father. Set me as a seal upon your heart. Let me as a seal upon your heart. Give me an eternal thirst. For your presence. Give me an eternal thirst for your presence. Father. Father. O righteous Father. O righteous Father. If there are any hindrances. If there are any hindrances. Stumbling blocks. Stumbling blocks. Blockages. In our walk, in our walk with you, with you, anything that eclipses my affection for you, anything that eclipses my affection for you, give me strong affection for you, give me strong affection for you, make me affectionate. In love with you, my God. Make me affectionate and love with you. Make us on this Zoom lovers and worshipers. Make us on this Zoom lovers and worshipers. Dress and keep us in your presence. Dress and keep us in your presence. We ask for discernment to know the wiles of the enemy. We ask for discernment to know the wiles of the enemy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's pray the let's pray the right hand prayer. Take it Thank you, Jesus. Father in Jesus. Father in Jesus, Jesus, you said in Colossians, you said in Colossians, seek those things at the right hand of God. Seek those things at the right hand of God. Take my hand and walk with me and teach me all things. Take my, Take my hand and walk with me and teach me all things. Oh, come on. Mm. Take my hand and walk with me and teach me all things. Take my, Take my hand and walk with me and teach me all things. Help us to master your love languages. Help us to master your love languages. This is the era of true love and true worship. Father, grant us true love and true worship unto thee. Father, grant us true love and true worship unto thee. Holy Spirit just said, we win battles by love, but we win wars by worship. Amen. So this year, any battle you are going through, what is your weapon? Love. 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 love there you go 
any war that will come in your heart. Any war. Worship. Hallelujah. Still me, yes. Lord, make, make me a lover of battle. Lord, make Lord, me a lover of battle. A worshiper of war. A worshiper of war. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. May I win battles on my knees. May I win, I win battles on my knees. knees. Mm. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. Say with me, this is the season. This, this is, is the season. season. And the time. And, and the, the time. time. To push. To, to push. push. P. Pray. 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 You. P U S H. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. So, so with me, Lord, give us the spirit of prayer and supplication. Lord, give us the spirit of prayer and supplication. To push until something happens. To push until something happens. When I'm weary. Give me joy. Come on. Let's when I'm weary, give me joy. When I'm tired, give me strength. When I'm tired, give me strength. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, make it now. When I am weak, give me love. When I am weak, give me love. This season, I ask for grace, rest, perseverance, and truth. This season, I ask for grace, 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 perseverance, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Let Let us decree our ever our everlasting love right now. We're gonna make a decree now, and it shall be established. Say we decree. We, we decree. decree our everlasting love. Our, our everlasting, everlasting love. love, our everlasting loyalty. Come on, somebody. Our, our everlasting, everlasting loyalty. loyalty, our everlasting trust, our, our everlasting trust, and our everlasting obedience to the Father. And our, and our everlasting, everlasting obedience to the Father. Whatever you are doing in this season, Lord. Whatever yeah, you are Lord. doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Oh, come on, come on, somebody. Father, whatever you are saying or doing in this season, Father, whatever you, you are saying, don't say it without me. Hey, bro, stop. don't no, say no, it without me. Without me. me. Don't do it without me, Lord. My God. Don't do it without me, Lord. Okay, Lord. Yes, Lord. You, Holy Spirit, don't say it without me there. Come on, somebody. Yes, don't say it without, without, me, without me, there. me there. Come on, don't say it without me there. Come on, somebody. Don't say it without me there. Don't do anything on earth without me with you. Don't do anything on earth without me with you. Help me, Lord, to stay in the times and seasons of your heart. Help, Help me, Lord, the Lord in the times and seasons of your heart. Of your heart. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. One second. Yes, Lord. Still with me, Father in Jesus. Father in Jesus. Before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, of the world you dreamt of me. You dreamt, you dreamt of, me. of me. You had a vision of me. You, you had, had a vision of me. of me. I now pray. I now pray. Bring to pass. 
Do you want Great. me to take that? Yeah. The very dream you had in your heart. The very the dream, dream you had in your heart. And, and the very vision you had in your mind about us. I hear Jesus saying, I dreamt of marrying you. Wow. Mm. I had a vision of you mm. being my bride in my new kingdom. Mm. Mm. Come on, say, Lord, manifest your dreams in my life. Come on. Watch this. Not my dreams, not my hopes. Mm -mm, I don't want my yes, dreams. I don't want my hopes. Yes, Come on. I don't want my desires. Come on. Who's yes, willing to lay all that down? Come on. Amen. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Sell me, Lord. Give me your dreams, your hopes, and your desires. Give me your dreams, your hopes, your desires, your wants, your needs. I lay down mine for yours. I, I lay, lay down mine for yours. Just name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, amen, someone. Amen. 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 So I say to each and every one of us. Do not take the bait of Satan in this season. Yes, Lord. Amen. I will not take the bait of Satan. That's right. Amen. I will not take the bait of Satan. Right. Amen. Take the, bait of Satan. the very mouth we are to be using to kiss Jesus. Don't let it be involved in gossip. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. What do you what do you use your lips to do? Kiss Jesus. To kiss, yes, right? Lord. Trust yes. me. Right. Oh, come on. The same lips we used we, sh we should be kissing his mouth with. We're using that lips to tear down people. Yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Say with me. Lord, I give you my lips again. <laughs> Lord, I give you my, my lips, lips again. Oh, come, come on. You know, the, the song says, Lord, I give you my life. No, check, switch it up. Lord, I give you my tongue. Or oh, somebody. Lord, Lord, I give, give you my tongue. tongue. Give tongue. May I only kiss your feet and not the kisses May of Satan. May I only kiss your feet and not the kisses of Satan. He said, the feet are the kisses of the enemy. Mm. Mm. The kisses of the enemy. Mm. Are the kisses of the enemy. Mm. So me, I will not lose my harvest over my mouth. I will, I will not, not lose, lose my, my harvest over my mouth. Watch this. Please Amen. hear this the revelation. I saw Jesus in a uh, field and he had a sachel around his waist. So, you know, sachel where farmers put seeds in it and they sprinkle, they sprinkle it on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was sprinkling seeds on the field. It was wheat seeds. But in the corner of the field, my friends, I saw a toothless Lion. Mm. Mm. And Jesus said, in this season, whatever you sow with your mouth, you will reap. Wow. Amen. That means if you sow gossip, what are you going to get back in return? That's mm. If you sow judgment, what are you going to get back in return? Judgment. So if we really want to see his hand move, we got to sow love. Yes, Come on, say with me. Say with me. My mouth will so love. My, My mouth will so love. love. I will so kindness in people. Come on, somebody. I will, I will so kindness in people. people. I will so mercy in people. Come on. I will, I will so, so mercy in people. The Lord is saying, Your harvest is based on what comes out of your mouth. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Life and death is where in the power of your power of the tongue. Don't abuse the power in your tongue in this season. Amen. The power in my tongue this season. Don't abuse it. Meaning, Don't if somebody comes to you with gospel, I want to get out of my face in Jesus' name. Amen. I, 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 if mm. anybody comes to you with gossip or slander, tell them to leave your presence. Amen. 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 Don't entertain Amen. poison and venom in this season. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, can I say it again? Don't entertain poison Amen. and venom in this season. 
because oh, watch this everything the father just have said about this year depends on it mm -hmm. so protect your field Amen. that's what the, the, the lion was toothless that means if you get involved in gossip you're gonna lose your teeth mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes be out here all guns you say you say how <laughs> You say how? Oh, Bible oh. says if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. How are you gonna eat? You don't have teeth. Mm -hmm. Well, come on, somebody. No, no, how are you gonna eat the good of the land from God? You don't have teeth. Bible says, come mm -hmm. and feast and dine with me. Where well, you gonna feast and dine with Jesus without teeth? You can't even be like a cow chewing on the grass without teeth. Mm -mm. Mm. You'd have to drink milk. Come on. <laughs> I'm milking enough. Go right about now. Come on, somebody. Amen. Say with me, Lord, I don't want to be a toothless lion. Lord, I don't, don't want to be a toothless, be a toothless lion. lion. Dress and keep me, Lord, from the crocodiles and the alligators. Dress, Dress and keep me, Lord, me, Lord from, from the crocodiles and the alligators. Oh, I'm serious, my friends. Have you seen an alligator? Mm. They like to smile, but they would bite you. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Don't get involved in this season, meaning don't be distracted by civil war in the body yeah. of Christ. Amen. Yes. As a matter of fact, can I tell you what Jesus said? Mm -hmm. He said, pick and choose your battles wisely. Everyone on the line. Mm -hmm. Meaning, do not no fight budget. any battles that don't threaten your relationship with him or your identity, period. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if it threatens your relationship with him, you can fight. But if it doesn't, mm -hmm. have you ever seen a lion roaring at a dog? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> so when the dogs so, so everybody, when the dogs are barking, I'm talking about religious people, he just called them dogs. Mm -hmm. When you're a lion, save your roar. Mm, come on, somebody. Don't miss that parable. Mm -hmm. Save your raw. Amen. Save, mm -hmm. Save your raw. Save your raw. Don't raw at dogs. It's not effective. Ah. Mm -hmm. I will not raw at dogs. That's it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So does anybody tonight have any requests or petitions? They would like to touch and agree in before we end. It's midnight. You know, stay in the Father and Jesus. Oh, I, I can't hear you, please. Oh, I was just saying that that we all stay, you know, on this walk with the Father and Jesus. Oh, amen. Girl, we ain't got no choice. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 I ain't staying with nobody else but them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. Amen. 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 So our love for them will be greatly tested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. I want to say something, but I'm going to say it at the right time. Mm -hmm. But don't know. Mm -hmm. At the right time. Yes, anybody else? There's one in the chat. Mm -hmm. what, what is our... Okay. Awesome. Gary, my friend. Mm -hmm. Gary said to fulfill the works of the Father in completion and spirit and truth. Oh, definitely. Gary, we touch and agree with you that the Father yes, will give you meat. He just said that my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his works. Gary, I, yes, pray, for the, I pray for the grace of the finisher. Yes, Lord. The grace of the omega. Mm -hmm. The grace of the end. You will yes. fulfill and finish Thank you, Jesus. The works the Father has given you, and you will not die before your time. Like Jesus, my Jesus time has not yet come. Jesus. Your time will not come until He takes you home. Amen. Yes, in the Lord. mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. That was Gary. Amen. Amen. Yes. Anybody else today?
So let me say it again. Each one of us, please. Uh, maybe I'll post it tomorrow on Facebook. Everyone online, stay, stay off social media. No, my name is... <laughs> mm -hmm. wait a minute. The baby wait, agrees. Wait, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> the, the baby got the, the baby got a, a, a request. Let me hear the baby again. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, out of the mouth of babe. You know they might be speaking yep. the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit, help us to the, interpret the tongue of the baby. You might be speaking. Amen. Every, you never know. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the baby's name? Uh, my daughter's name is Destiny. Destiny. Mm. Well, mm, prophetic. That's prophetic. Yes, Lord. Right. Any, everybody watch this. Any word that comes from Destiny's mouth, we receive it for our destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Destiny, what's the law saying? Where's she at? Come on, somebody. <laughs> She's here touching her head. <laughs> Amen, Destiny. We receive it in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Anything Amen. else, Destiny, for us? <laughs> you know what the Bible says about children? Everyone on the line is deep. Jesus said, their angels are face to face with the father. Mm. That's what you just said. We receive a girl in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, let me see. Jesus said, Suffer not the children to come to me because their Amen. angels are before the face of the father. Can I go deep? Everybody, mm. whenever you are praying, put a baby on your lap and pray. Amen. You will have direct face to face with the Father through children. Amen. Mm. Oh, I'm giving you a mm. secret. Many Amen. times I'll go and take someone's baby and I start praying. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> because babies are yeah. open heaven. Come on, somebody. Yeah, they are innocent. They are innocent. They are pure. That's a secret. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we receive her angels before Amen. your face. Amen. 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 Oh, sounds like she has to say amen too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is anybody else tonight? You were saying, Brother Kofi, for us to stay away from social media. <laughs> Girl, you already know. I ain't, you know, you know, I ain't gonna get involved in that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you, you want me to say it again? Stay away from what social media because the dragon, yes, Lord, is attacking the woman. I'm speaking in parables. Yes. Revelation twelve is playing out right before our eyes. The dragon is attacking the church yes. through media. Yes. I'm speaking in parables. What I'm saying is, please, if you see anybody on the media attacking men and women of God, and is the prince of the power of the air. Stay away from social media. Oh. Mm -mm. So... And stay in Jesus' face. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. We want to be in his face more than be in the Facebook. Yes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, book. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, God bless each and every one of you. It's 12. Mm -hmm. It's a time for everything. The time to rest. But we are trusting and believing the Father for manifestations this year. Mm -hmm. And it's all from the relationship. So, Father, may the Lord bless and keep us. Make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. In this time and season, in Jesus' name, amen. So amen. love you all. Love you all. God bless you all. God bless and tomorrow, you. tomorrow we meet at 9 p.m. again in Jesus' name. So shalom. Good night.